Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about valve alignment and I'm going to try to get the valves on this cheap horn so that they're as close to perfect as I can make them. It's a fairly big important issue with all French horns but especially with cheap ones because the little markings that they put on the valves to tell you when the valves are aligned are not always accurate when they come from the factory. So I'm going to show you two ways that I kind of work around that to make sure that they actually are aligned. Before I get to that work, well, I had a couple problems with the horn over this past week when I was playing it, and I'll show you what I did about those problems. So let's get started. So I did a bit of playing on this horn this past week and it wasn't a very pleasant experience. The horn didn't seem to play very well and seemed to have a leak in it someplace. I couldn't quite place it. So I started wrapping up all the likely joints with electrician's tape to figure out what was going on. And when I got to this major join between the bell and the main body of the instrument, when I sealed it up with electrician's tape, suddenly it played quite well. So I guess I didn't do a good job in that joint and I'm gonna have to get some more solder in there before I um, do any other work on the horn. On the F side, there is a little slide and it has a brace that runs across it. And when I wanted to pull the F slide out, the brace popped off. And I noticed when it fell off that it wasn't even the right dimensions for the brace. It was um, not set at the correct angle. So I guess it's good it fell off. For those of you who don't know, on the top of these valves on the French horn, there are two little markings that tell you when the valves are in perfect alignment. But I'm not sure that I trust those markings always. I always like to double check them and sometimes I find that they're quite far off. First step, pull out the valve slide for the second valve and then immobilize the valve. And I'm gonna do that by putting this pencil in here so that the valve doesn't move. Then I need a miracle tool made out of coat hanger wire and it's bent at just the correct angle so that I can reach up there into the valve slide and find out if the valve is in alignment. Now this takes a little bit of practicing. If I reach up there and that little piece of wire hangs up on something, that means that the valve has turned too far. And then if I compare that with how it feels on the other side in the other tube, I'll notice that there's a distinct difference. Both sides should feel the same. Now, I don't do this very hard. I don't want to scratch anything in there at all. I just kind of feel what each valve feels like with the end of the wire. If it catches and holds, then the valve is not in perfect alignment. This takes a little bit of practice. With only three or four hours of practice a day, you too can become an expert at this. That is, if you've got the coat hanger wire. I do. Most of my car is held together by it. Well, guess what? The markings on top seem to be pretty accurate because when I reached up there, I realized that the valve was not in alignment and those markings say it's out of alignment as well. So now I reposition the pencil so that the valve is in correct alignment according to the markings. And I'm just gonna double check with my wire to make sure that those markings are in fact accurate and they do seem to be accurate. We're gonna double check though with this device called a borescope. I got this at Harbor Freight for only about 20 bucks. And it's a USB, plugs into my computer. And on the other end of that cable is a little tiny video camera. Not only a little video camera, but also about five little LED lights so I can see where I'm going. Now I realize that uh, this portion of the video is going to perhaps look a little bit medical. For those of you who are squeamish, well, get used to it.
This is what it looks like in there as I slide the camera up into the second valve slide. You can see part of the second valve there. And if I press the valve, you can see it moving. And I'm trying to figure out if it's aligned or not. I see a little black edge there, but if I move it slowly, I can see that it is in fact out of alignment. So let me try the other side. If it's in alignment, it should look exactly like the other side. But already I can see that little black crescent in there, which indicates that part of the valve is hanging out into the tube, and that's not a good sign. So what this means is that one of the little cork stoppers on the other side of the valve needs to be a little larger, or the other one needs to be a little smaller. This one tells me if the valve is aligned when it's open. That represents a little bit of a problem on this horn because whoever drilled the holes for the holder that holds those valve stoppers that you're looking at, those black rubber things, did not do a great job. So this will give me a chance to try out one of my experiments. This is well, it's basically fuel tubing off a car, and I'm going to try to use it as a rubber stopper. So I cut off some of the scissors. And when I do, it flies off into space, and I never actually did find it. So I guess I'll just go back and use regular French horn stoppers. But as I was saying, they didn't do a good job on this horn because the plates that hold the stoppers are not in the correct position. The holes were not drilled in the correct position into the valve casing. That means one cork, as we call them, or one valve stopper needs to be very large and the other needs to be very, very small. They should be the same size. So this is what I came up with. One is sliced down to the minimum and the other is barely hanging on in there. And I'm going to hold that in place with a little dab of hot melt glue just to make sure it doesn't pop out. But once I do that, then the valve should be in the correct alignment. Now I'm going to have to do this on all three valves. But I think I can say that these valves are aligned according to the markings. Next time, we're going to talk about the role of weight in French horns. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing to my channel, The Horn Guild. Thanks.